Hey, what's up guys? Bobo Rail here, and today is Isanzo's launch day. I've now got a few hours of playtime on the game, and I feel I've been on long enough to utilize all the mechanics and give an honest first impression of it. To clarify, I'm playing on Xbox Series S, and so far I've had a pretty great experience with the game. So let's jump right into this. Let me start off by saying this is a phenomenal improvement over the last games in the series. Tannenberg and Verdun are great games that I've had a lot of fun with over the years, but overall they just kind of lacked a level of professional polish, and you could still feel that they were indie games. Isanzo has completely changed that. There is an absolutely higher standard for the graphics, movement, gunplay, and level of detail that is assisted in finding the perfect balance between realism and casual gameplay. Now, I won't say this game is 100% perfect, there are some issues here and there, but generally speaking, this launch has gone much smoother than I expected it to, and I've been thoroughly enjoying all the time I've spent playing the game. That being said, I have crashed a few times, but in terms of frame rate and general performance, it feels great, and having an FOV slider on console is a nice touch. So let's start by breaking down some of the finer details of this. To start, we'll talk about the game mode, and how this mix of capture and plant diffuse objectives works in practicality. In a lot of ways, this feels like Verdun's old frontline system has been dialed in to near perfection. My biggest issues with how Verdun handled the objectives was that the map borders were way too restrictive, and with it only being a capture slash defend point every sector, it felt very repetitive. With Isanzo, I can confidently say that the elevation, foliage, and developmental differences between each objective make them play very different than the last, making you have to switch up your playstyle as the match progresses. Now this is both a positive and a negative, because while I see this increasing the game's replayability a lot, it also can be very frustrating to be in the trenches in one sector, then in long range fields in the next. So suddenly that pistol that you're using is much less effective. That's very much a nitpick, and it's just something that can be solved by switching classes, but I found myself enjoying some sectors of the maps and really disliking others. For example, I love the forest combat on the Fior map, but once you get up onto the plateau above the limestone formations, I really dislike the lack of cover and how many angles have to be covered in order to make any ground. Now, I will say that my concerns of maps being one-sided for the defenders are all but gone, as overall, there's a pretty good balance between the attackers and defenders having the advantage and any sectors that do feel unbalanced can be pretty easily overcome with some well-placed smoke and a good push to make and construct one of the forward spawn points. Which transitions me into my next topic, construction. Now, I've found myself gravitating towards the engineer class a lot in gameplay, because buildables are not only essential to holding or taking new sectors, but also are some of the most fun to use. Field guns, mortars, and MGs all look and feel great, but one criticism I have is the field guns need better penetration damage, and as of now, they feel really weak for how few and far between they are. Now, for the immediate sandbags and barbed wire, I think they work great. Being able to place them pretty much anywhere makes them very useful, and both serve the purpose they're supposed to. All in all, I think building was one of those components that the other games really lacked when it came to replayability, and I think they've implemented it into Isanzo really well. Now, I've only been playing for a few hours total, and I understand why they made this portion the way they did, but it takes a lot of gameplay to unlock weapons. For the most part, it's pretty fair once you get the challenges, but the level limit to unlock said challenges is really what holds you back from unlocking stuff. Because of that, I can't really speak on the balancing of the later pistols or machine guns, and I've been stuck using revolvers and bolt actions exclusively. Now, some of the challenges to unlock things are very mundane, like the ammo box in the Verdely for the rifleman is just 10 kills and capturing objectives, and the sniper's revolver is just 10 headshots and 10 kills while crouched. But man, the engineer revolver with 30 MG kills is pretty lengthy, and I imagine these unlocks will get more and more difficult as I progress. And so, I really haven't used any of the other guns yet because of the level cap. I see why they made this so difficult because they want people actively playing and working for them, so I understand it, but it'll be a while until I can actually use some of the bigger and better guns. Now let's talk about the classes, because other than different perks, which are again level locked to be far down the line, their differences are relatively negligible, but I think as the community progresses as a whole, their differences will become a lot more important. Right now, Rifleman and the Ammo Box is kinda irrelevant, because most people aren't actually shooting that many rounds with bolt actions, so you tend to get shot well before you run out of ammo or it needs to be replenished. Now the one exception to this is the Officer's Flare Gun, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. So now let's talk about the officer. 
The officer is definitely the most important class, and honestly, I think this is one of the best call-in systems I've ever seen in a tactical shooter. The flare gun is necessary to target for fire support, and the officer spawns with a flare gun and two flares. They shoot one flare and a node pops up on the call-in menu, and if they shoot two flares in the same spot, then whatever call-in they will use will have some extra strength. <laughs> now this call-in menu isn't an on-the-go thing for the officers, and they have to head to radio stations, which are scattered around the front lines as buildables, but are also a constant in held objective areas. This to me makes being an officer a lot more fun, but a big responsibility, because you need to be an active team member getting flares on the right spot, but you'll also want some teamwork from your engineers to build those frontline command posts. If not though, no worries, you'll just have to fall back a bit and play the objective in order to use those abilities. Once again, I think the officer flow just works really well, and the wide selections of abilities let you have a lot of different tactical choices. Now for the assault class. This is pretty cool, and you can tell it's a more CQB focused class. I like the canteen a lot, which decreases suppression and stamina burn for a short period, but once you unlock the grenades, this becomes a lot more useful. The Mountaineer is a really interesting one because it's the only real spotter for the team with binoculars, but the flare gun as the first unlock also makes them potentially really useful if you're in a squad with an officer. And the starting carbine is freaking awesome for CQP. Now the last class, the Sniper, is really cool and the scopes feel way better than they did in previous titles. Even though they're still picture in picture, the FOV feels a lot better on them, and because of that, you can actually scan for enemies and you're a really valuable asset for clearing objectives from a distance. So now let's talk about the maps. There are six maps in the game at launch. Those are Carso, Sabatino, Dolomites, Garizia, Sengio, and Fior. All of these have their own little caveats to them, but overall, like I mentioned earlier, the gameplay experience varies depending on the sectors. The one thing they do have in common though is amazing visuals, in both the foreground and background. Photorealistic textures and volumetric lighting really bring the game to life and add a new brighter color palette to the game than the series is used to. The greens of foliage really pop out, and the interiors of buildings are actually something else. The decorations and props inside them just make them feel so much more alive. And I anticipate a lot of no HUD cinematics in the channel's future. Now graphically, I do notice some tearing here and there, and I don't know if it would be possible to get VSync on console to reduce that. Now to close this video out, let's talk about what's probably the most important piece that makes this game feel better than its predecessors, which is of course the animations and gunplay. All the new third person character models, vaulting, recoil, and weapon sway come together to make it feel very fluid, and while they still aren't necessarily on the level of its AAA comparative Battlefield 1, it has its own more realistic flavor to it where everything is a little bit slower and more methodical. I see a lot of people comparing the game to BF1, and I don't blame them because it's the only other game that's ever attempted this unique setting. While I love Battlefield 1, the game was still balanced and marketed at a 100% casual audience. So what Isanzo lacks in comparison with animations and dev resources, it compensates for with realism. And I don't think it's really fair to compare the two when one is the closest a game has gotten to representing the Italian front of World War I, and the other lets you slide cancel with SMGs and snipe pilots out of the air. Isanzo is carving itself a very unique niche in the tactical shooter genre, and I think with the improvements the series has made, it may finally be able to stand on its own two feet against these industry giants. This is undeniably one of the most enjoyable shooters I've played in a while. Great maps, fantastic graphics, good feeling guns, dynamic teamwork that's pretty optional but still valuable for success, and a new replayable game mode with long term unlocks is setting this game up to have a longer life cycle and more attention overall. I think you can tell my opinion on the game already, and I'm happy to say that at least in my eyes it's lived up to the 33 dev blogs worth of hype. I'm excited to keep playing more of this game and covering it on the channel, and I'd love to use it as a platform to interact with you guys, the community. If you'd like to play with either me on Xbox or Chris on PC, we'll be holding some group games throughout the next few weeks over on the VSL Discord. When joining, simply accept the rules and get the reaction role for the World War 1 game series to settle into our little corner for the game. Thank you all for watching my review of the game, and please let me know your opinions of it because I'm very curious how the general community feels about it. Because even though I've tried to be as honest as possible, I still think I'm a pretty biased enjoyer of the game. 
Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.